friends, it's Carolyn Zook here with Zook Stitch, and today is Saturday, June 3rd, 2023. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch. I want to wish Joy Lisa a very happy birthday today. Um, it's it's many people's birthdays. Um, I have three very important people whose birthday it is today, and three people who are important to me. <laughs> um, their birthday's today one of which is Joy Lisa. So wishing you a very happy birthday. I was fortunate enough to actually get to meet Joy Lisa um, at Stitching in the Wild. She sat at the table kind of right next to me. Uh, so that was super fun. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, we are definitely into spring or summer in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I think we'll be at 90 degrees early next week. I don't like. <laughs> um, when I was traveling in May, I, we were in the mid 90s and I actually missed it all because I was in Florida, which is so much cooler. Um, so we have already had, we had, um, they said that our May was the warmest overall um, May on record. So yay. <laughs> Those of you who've been with me for a while know I don't like the heat. I, Cranky Caroline comes out, but uh, we have to go through the summer in order to get to fall and winter, <laughs> which I understand. I hope you all had a good week. My week was actually pretty normal. Uh, work is definitely quieting down now that, I mean, I'm still teaching a summer class, but um, all the meetings and all that, you know, faculty and all that, they're gone for the summer. So it's kind of a nicer pace, I will say. So class is going well. I think we're halfway through. We go through, I think we just finished... Um, I'm, I'm fidgeting with this little plug. That's what was in my hand. Um, I think we have three weeks left. Of it's only a six week class. Uh, so it goes very quick, but it meets Monday through Thursday. So it is a pretty intensive course, but, uh, it's going well. I only have five students in the class and the class is over zoom. So a lot of times I feel like I'm speaking into the void. Um, but anyway, but it was a good week. And now we're back to the weekend. It was a short week because we had Monday off. A lot of us had Monday off anyway. So I could get used to three-day weekends. Um, I have a bunch of q and I am not through all the... I, I've uploaded several videos this past week, and I am not through the comments. I am I think I'm through almost all the comments on my Stitching in the Wild recap. But a discussion that we're having from, I think it was even from the video before I left for my trip. It's been a while, so I apologize about that. Um, it's about how do you get those wrinkles out of your cross-stitch pieces. So some really, really helpful tips uh, in the comments. So I wanted to share them with you. I have my notes so I don't forget. Um, okay, Cheryl said that in quilting, they use something called clappers. Um, and Fat Quarter Shop sells them. And I looked them up and they are $25 to $35 depending on what size you get. And basically you iron your piece and then you put these clappers on top of it, which should help get out some of those wrinkles. She also suggested using a wool mat, which of course I actually have one upstairs I've never used, it's still in the original packaging. Um, and so the wool, what the wool does is it heats up so you have the iron on one side of your fabric and the wool on the other side and the wool kind of heats up uh, the fabric and so it can smooth it from both sides. So Cheryl, thank you so much for that tip. Um, um, I will definitely look into the clappers. Um, uh, let's see, Funkarella. Is that you, Kathy? I, I'm not sure if that's that's you, but um, I, I recognize the name. Funkarella suggested, so when you are have a fabric that is folded, um, you know, one side will be like the mountain and the other side will be the valley. And she said, stitch on the side with the valley because it's easier to get that, um, that crease out if you're stitching in the valley than the other way. So that was a tip from Funkarella. Um, Carolyn suggested spraying with vinegar water. Now, I don't know if that's safe on, on hand-dyed fabrics or not, um, but it did remind me my friend Andrea said to that you can spray it very gently, very, very lightly with like a best press or something like that. Um, just you don't want to saturate it, especially if you're using um, over-dyed 
threads, hand-dyed fabrics, and that type of thing. I have not tried that because I am a little nervous to do that, but they say it works. Just don't saturate, just very, very lightly mist it. Um, and so those were some tips that we had uh, for how to get those stubborn wrinkles out of your craft stitch pieces. So thank you, everyone. That's really helpful. Um, I had some other questions not related to that, but Mary Jo asked, how do you stitch a large piece without guidelines, without the, the guidelines in it? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I make errors. Definitely. I make errors. I often will start, I'm a, I, I like to start for the most part in the upper left, left hand corner. Some people start in the center uh, and work their way out, which is great if you aren't quite sure the dimensions of your fabric or the size of your fabric to make sure it fits kind of centered on the piece of fabric. I like stitching. A lot of the pieces I stitch have borders. And so it's easy for me to do a upper left-hand corner start. That's just where I like to start. Um, and I don't know, sometimes with the border, I, there's two different techniques with the border. Some people like to do the border all right around first because then they know that their borders will meet up when they get to the other side. And some people say it's easier for them if they stitch the border along with the piece. So they'll do a little bit of border um, and then a little bit of the insides and then stretch the border further, do more insides, and that helps them keep on track. I've done it both ways and I've probably made errors both ways and it's worked out both ways. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think just kind of counting, double, you know, count twice, stitch once, um, but yeah, I don't really, I, I, maybe I should worry about it more than I do, but I don't actually worry too much about, um, you know, getting way, way off because, um, I mean, I have before, as you all know, and I've either frogged it or, and restarted it, frogged a section of it, uh, which I will show you some pieces that I've done that on, um, or you fudge it, right? So that's, that's how I do it. I don't know. I do count a lot. Um, and I do get off and sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't. So I don't, if anybody has better tips than I just stitch it, <laughs> which is essentially what I'm saying. Uh, if anyone has better tips for Mary Jo, um, please let us know. Um, she's wondering how to stitch a large piece without grid lines. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just stitch and count. <laughs> um, Neil, Neil asked, whatever happened to stitching shelves? Well, Neil, it's in here. This is my, I got this from Society 9, I think is what it's called. Um, and I just thought I'd bring it and show it to you um, because I am still working on it. It was supposed to come out in April for our magazine, our um, monthly magazine, because um, our theme was a library. So this is what it looks like. It is my biggest hate. It's called A Stitching Shelf, artwork by Amy Stewart, charted by um, Heaven and Earth Designs. This is what it will look like. We started this in August. Uh, there's, a, there's a Facebook group, actually, of people, because a, a big group of us started this um, in August for World Cross Stitch Day. And I haven't worked on it. I mean, if you follow um, Tina Stitches, Tina Goodell, um, oh my gosh, she does 100 stitches a day. Um, we figured if you do 100 stitches a day, it will take you 10 years. I am not doing, so she's super far. This is where I'm at on mine. Um, so I am not very far at all. I didn't write down how far I am, but I mean, this is, this is a lifelong project if it ever gets done. <laughs> so that's where we're at on that. Um, and my intent is that it will come out again. Um, I do want to stitch on it again for, um, um, World Cross Stitch Day. So it will come out in August for a few days. It was supposed to come out in uh, April, but we just ran out of time. That was when my dad was here for two weeks. So thanks for asking about that, Neil. Um, it's still here. <laughs> um, it's just waiting to be stitched on. Maybe I'll send mine to, excuse me, while I reach down for this next piece I want to show you. Um, maybe I'll send mine to Tina, and she can do, you know, 100 stitches on hers and then 100 stitches on mine. How about that? Cool. Um, the other question I had was from Kathy, Kathy who asked, are you still working on the cat in the window piece? And Kathy, I think the one you're talking about, which is in this really, really cute Garon bag, which you have not seen in a very long time, so I'm glad you asked about it. 
Um, it is from the Ultimate Cross Stitch Cat and Dogs. This is volume 21 from 2019. And the piece that Kathy is referring to, I believe, is called Warm Welcome. And it will look like this. And I am, it's still in my whip pile. Um, it is definitely still in my whip pile. Um, and so I'll show you where I'm at on that. This is one where I messed up majorly and had to frog a whole bunch. Oh, I love it. Thanks for asking about this, Kathy. It's like, oh, I want to I wanna bring this out and stitch on again. I messed up majorly somewhere in here, and I thought I could fudge it, and I couldn't. So I ended up, like, frogging, like, basically a large portion of these flowers. And I've restitched them since. So, yeah, sometimes we do have to frog. Um, but this is just the back arbor. So I haven't stitched on this yet in a while. I don't know the last time I stitched. It was last year sometime, but um, thanks for asking about it. It is still on my active whip list, um, and I love it. I just haven't stitched on it. Um, and that, <laughs> I did this, I did this thing um, this week. I, um, I listed out my projects that I've had, my whips that I've had since 2020 or earlier. Oh my goodness. This is an eye opening task for me. I have 15 whips that I started in 2020 or earlier, and they're all giant. <laughs> and so it was kind of, it kind of, I mean, some of them I have a plan for, some of them will be finished this year. Um, I'm going to get my little list here. If I, I can't remember. Where, oh, no, I know where I put it. I have my list right here. Uh, some of them, Winter Quakers, which I plan to finish this year. Uh, so that one will be off. Hearthside Christmas, which I plan to finish this year, which will be off the list. Um, but a lot of them are really big pieces. Like a Christmas celebration, which is that um, kit, that Dimensions kit that I've restarted at least once, if not more than once, and I've made very little progress on. All my Hawk Run Hollows, I've only finished one of them, and I'm very burnt out on them. Um, but I have um, the Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow, I have Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Is that, a, is that all of them? Christmas, Halloween, Autumn, yeah. So I have three more Hawk Run Hollows, and I'm very burnt out on them. Uh, I finished spring, was it last year? Last spring? Um, or maybe it was the year before even. I, I'm very, like, the thought of pulling them out makes me very tired. And so I'm going to have to figure out <laughs> what to do. Am I going to, especially autumn. Autumn is the one that kind of, like, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um because I think I have the first four blocks done. So I'm like, could I just end it there? But then when I see it full, fully done, I'm like, I really do like it. So we'll see. Um, Christmas, I do really like. I've, I'm not even done with three blocks on that one. Halloween, I do really like a lot, but I just need to work on them. But I kind of had said, like, I'm not going to touch them this year. I just need a little bit of space from them. Um, and so you see my long dogs, Death by Cross Stitch and Hoity Toity, uh, we're both started, well, Death by Cross Stitch was started in May of 2020. Hoity Toity was actually started in August of 2019. So that one I actually moved to my to be completed list for next year. I don't know that I'll work on it this year, but for next year, this was a really good, um, project for me. Um, because I did move my, my, um, my fancy ladies, Princess Ileana and Royal Holiday, we're both started in 2020, so those need to be done. Um, I just haven't worked on them very much. I don't know why. Um, so we're, we have big plans for next year. We're going to have, I don't know, I don't, you might be seeing the same projects over and over and over again next year because um, there's a lot. So I don't know. That, those questions kind of prompted me to look at like, well, how long have I been working on some of these? So thank you for those questions. It does help put it into perspective. So um, I'm still going to start new things, though. Let's be let's be honest. Um, but yeah, it's time to pull out some of these old oldies, but goldies, I guess you would say. 
Um, okay, so uh, there were a couple more questions. One more question. Shaman asked, which Quaker is my favorite? Um, I think it's Summer Quakers, uh, the one I just finished, because the colors are just so bright and vibrant, and I love the bright and vibrant colors. Um, I really liked Autumn. I think I'll appreciate Autumn more when it's actually Autumn out. Um, spring, I'm looking at it right now. It's hanging on my wall. I love it. Um, but I think summer is going to be my favorite because of all the, the really bright colors and the pink fabric. I love pink. I know blue is my favorite color, but I love pink too. And so there's a lot of, it was a pink fabric and there were a lot of variations of pinks and bright colors on there. So I think Summer Quakers by Rosewood Manor is my favorite one. And I have to admit that alphabet turned out really, really cute. I'm so glad that I did it. So thank you to those of you who encouraged me to do that. Um, okay. I think that's all the questions that I have for this week. Like I said, I'm still getting caught up on comments, but let's do May stats because we're in a new month. Um, so in May, I stitched a total of 92 hours, which is pretty good, uh, considering I was traveling for part of that time. And there were definitely, uh, there was definitely that period of time when I was with my family where I didn't stitch at all. Um, I started the month with 54 whips and I ended the month with 53 whips. Ah, yay. Um, I had one new start, which was trust the universe, which you'll see here in just a minute. Um, and that was for mental, um, healthcare, May mental healthcare cell. Um, so I started that at Stitching in the Wild. I had two finishes, one of which was Summer Quakers and the other one was StitchCon 2022. So that brought, so even though I still had a new start, I had two finishes. So I'm down to 53 whips, which I'm, I'm okay with. It'd be great if I could get that number to like 30. That's a very big task. Um, okay, so we are 17 minutes in, and let's see what I actually stitched on this week. So to finish up May, I worked on spring montage for two days to finish up the month. And so this is what it will look like. This is a pain-free crafts. Um, it, it's artwork by Janet Stever, but it's charted by pain-free crafts. And I am up here in this first block. So we have one more month to work on this. So we'll be seeing this four more times. We'll work on it and then she will go away until um, next year. So this is where we're at. So you can definitely see those blossoms coming through. I did a lot of fill-in in this section here. So I think all of the, the kind of ninja stitches, if you will, are done in here. And so we're kind of moving over now. So I did a total of 719 stitches over those two days that I worked on it. Um, and in May, in total, in May, I got 1,533 stitches done on it. I started the month at 1.44% and I ended the month at 2.48%. So almost two and a half percent done. And then, like I said, we'll stitch on it on Sundays. This is my seasonal Sunday piece. I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that is where we're at with spring montage. So this will be fun. Um, I know like EJ and Candy are working on theirs and they really do change theirs to the next month um, because like summer starts, I don't know what, the 21st of June. So there's a Sunday in the month of May where um, it's technically summer. And so they will switch their pieces to summer. I still do spring through the month because so my brain thinks in months, although I'm having some FOMO. So I don't know if I'll shift that for next year. But um, yeah, so four more Sundays. We'll, we'll see that at work. We'll see that at work. We'll see that put to work. <laughs> okay. So my um, 25-7 piece, whoops, don't show you the chart, for June, and I did work on this at the end of May as well, is Tudor B by the Blue Flower. Um, I'm very selective with the B patterns. I love this one. I originally got this because I was going to stitch it for a smalls exchange um, at StitchCon last year, and then I started and I was like, this is way bigger than I thought. Uh, or it's a way more stitching than I thought. So 
um, I abandoned that idea. But this is where I got to. So I'm really pleased. Just 25 minutes a day. There were a couple of days where I stitched longer. Uh, but I finished this side of the border is done. And then I'm starting to carry over. So this honeycomb I finished last night. And then there's a smaller honeycomb up here. It's not even that big. And then this other half. And then I could start in the center. So it is a, you know, a huge piece. I think I am stitching this on maybe Country Vintage Mocha. I'll have to double check what it's stitched on. Um, country Vintage Mocha would make the most sense because I have a lot of it. Uh, but this one is also really fun because of those bright pinks and the greens and all that. So that is where I'm at on that one. And so that's a fun one and it's, it's easy to do, but, and you see your progress pretty quickly, kind of, your progress kind of adds up pretty quickly. So that one's been fun. So 25-7 is a group on Facebook. It's called Cross Stitch 25-7. It's run by Melody, Melanie Watkins of Soulful Stitching. And the idea is that you stitch on a piece 25 minutes a day or 25 stitches a day. I think the intent was just to get people stitching a little bit every day. Um, oh, So like if you don't do anything else, maybe you can put in 25 stitches. I think that was the initial intent. A lot of people they use like will pick a project for their 25 seven and then stitch. That's what I do. And then I stitch additionally on top of that. Um, and that's been really great. It's really made some progress. You know, if you do that every day in a month, you end up getting around 12 hours, uh, of on a piece each month, somewhere around there. So, um, yeah, it's been really, really fun. So, Another one I pulled out, which I'm so excited. So this is the bag from Marilyn. She sent it to me because she said this reminded her of Miniature Marvels, which I'm working on, and I'll show you here in just a minute. Isn't that a lovely bag? So, of course, I had to put Miniature Marvels in it. So Miniature Marvels is in the World of Cross Stitching. This is issue 315. This is what the cover looks like. And this is a piece designed by Jenny Vanderweel. And this is what it will look like. So I started over here. I went to here and then I went down and did the school and now I'm working my way back over. So I love this piece so much. I'm just stitching this on a 28 count dove uh, gray that was in my stash. And here's where I got to. So I've worked on this for three days. Um, and this was for, in May, the Magazine Monthly Challenge. The theme was Arctic, so this counted for that. And then I, and then the acrostic was Borealis. And I use this for the L and the I because there is a lake. Well, it's really a pond, but a lake over here. But the lake is ice, and there, there's ice skating over here. I didn't work on that. But I only, when I started, so the school was done when I started, and these three cheese, trees were done. And I think I had part of this house started. So I did the rest of these trees, finished this house, went down, did this house, these few trees here, and then the horse and carriage. So I got a lot done in three days. So I'm super excited. I love this. This isn't a super big piece. I'm still on the first page, but the first page is like the other pages aren't full pages. So there's a little bit more to, to do down below, but then like, the next page, I mean, there is this kind of goes out here. So there's a little more over here. Um, but the like third and fourth page is just like a row of maybe 20 stitches at that. It's basically just this um, down bottom border. So this is going to come out again later in the year. Um, and this is going to be on my year of whips to finish for next year. Even though I just started it last year. <laughs> this is not a 2020 start. But I love working on this. This is one of those that's really, because there's just a lot of mini motifs, it's really easy to work on. Because uh, you just say, okay, just one more motif, one more motif. And they go really, really fast. And then all of a sudden you have a scene before you. So I really am loving working on that one. And then um, a piece I, I pulled out, which you also haven't been seen in a while that I have been asked about, is Purple Rain. So... This is the project bag that was made by my dear friend, Debbie, for Purple Rain. 
This fabric is hand dyed by none other than EJ. Um, and this is where I got to. It doesn't look like much, but let me explain. So I did a lot of fill in. This is 450 stitches that I did from when you saw it last time. Um, and I moved it from 0.58% to 1.22%. I suppose I should show you what it will look like when it's done. So this is a heaven and earth design. Um, and so I'm right up here. I probably should have cut like a bunch of this down. This is uh, uh, the mini version as well. So it's quite a bit smaller, which is fine. There's a lot of purple. So here's what I've learned about myself. Like it's nice to do block color once in a while, but like this is, I mean, a lot of what I did was the not even variations in purple. Like you can see there is some variation, but like it's the same color of purple. Um, it was a lot to just do purple and to know. I mean, I know it's called Purple Rain. Um, so um, I worked on this once. Um, and I, I this is not going to be a piece I'm, you know, usually I like to do like a three or four day rotation. I don't know if I can do this at least at this point on this piece because it's literally just mostly the same color. Um, now, I know Candy will probably love it because it's her favorite color. And I like purple, too. Like, I'm definitely not against purple. Um, but this is a challenge. This is this is funny because this is challenging for me in a different way because I'm not changing colors all the time. Like, the Quaker pieces, you're changing colors. You know, you might do three or four stitches, and then you have to change colors. This is challenging in a different way. This might be a good retreat piece, honestly. Again, I'm doing the mini version, um, but this I might think about taking to a retreat because there is so much um, block of color on this. Um, so I was able in like a three hour chunk of time, I was able to get 450 stitches in. Um, unlike my montages when I do three hours, you know, sometimes I can get like 325, maybe, maybe 350 if it's a really good chunk of color. But especially spring montage has a lot of confetti. This one does not, <laughs> at least not yet, I should say. So um, this one is challenging for me to work on in a completely different way. But I'm already at 1.22% of the way done. Um, so that's purple rain. So not seeing a lot of progress. It doesn't look like anything other than purple background. But we'll get there. And then the last piece that I worked on for this month was... Uh, trust the universe. So the um, trust the universe was my mental, uh, my May mental health care start that I started at Stitching in the Wild. Um, this one is by the Snowflower Diaries. This is what it will look like. I believe this was a market release. And I just thought this one, it's really nice for mental health care, trust the universe. And I also thought this would be, because I work with college students, so I thought this would be nice to hang in my office. It's just like, you know, you know, it's going to work out. They're a little high strung. The, the students I work with are a little high strung. <laughs> um, and this, so for June, our monthly magazine theme is farm and our acrostic is manure. So this is the U in manure for trust the universe. So I worked on this last night. This is my needle minder that says mental health matters. And that is from Debbie. And so last night I got that T in. So it's going to say trust the, and it's real. I promise it shows up in real life. Um, there's this big giant bird. Um, and there's a ton of white stitches. Like, so I basically stitched the bird's entire face. If I hold it really close, you can see it. It's in white. Um, so it's kind of, it does show up in real life though. I'm stitching this on a 32 count cresting wave by Fortnite Fabrics. Um, yeah, it, it looks like there's nothing in there, but um, I promise I worked on that. That was also a lot of white stitching. And then you have the girl here and then there's like the body of the bird. So there's going to be a lot more, but... This is fun, um, and this is a good one to use when you have a, a U for trust the universe. So when you have a U in your acrostic that you need to use, this is a good one. 
So that's what I work on this week. Uh, so that was really, really fun. It was a good week. A lot of block colors, which um, was an interesting challenge for me, actually. Um, okay, let's do haul. I do have haul to show you. Um, first up, let's see. Okay. So for the month of June, I believe, Victoria Clayton Silks. I got a bunch of her soaps. That doesn't show you anything. Let me show you. They're all the same color. Um, she is doing these large um, balls, skeins, bobbins of silks. I got, they're 25 yards, six strand of floss. I got perfect red, 6211 slash 6215. So it is a variegated red. It is called perfect red. It kind of matches my top, actually. Um, and I got seven of them. So she's running deals. These are like super cheap for 25 yards. I think they were $8 a piece. But the reason why I got so many of them is because I want to use them for this chart that I showed you last time that I got at Colorado Cross Stitcher when I visited there with my friend Jesse. Quaker Christmas. So I want to do this all in red, the whole thing in red. And I thought, I don't have my fabric yet, but I thought this is... I mean, it's called Perfect Red. So I thought that would be a really nice red. It's variegated. It's not too variegated. It's slightly variegated. Um, I thought that would be perfect for that. So that's why I got so many of these. I actually bought an extra one when I did the math. Like, I really only need six, but then I was like, oh, I'm going to get an extra one just in case. I'd just rather have it and not need it than run out. So that's... Vicki Clayton Silk. So if you are wanting to kit up a big project um, or something that you want to do all in one color or something like that, I would go to Vicki Clayton Silks um, and, and um, stock up now before the end of the month. Because I think it just runs through the end of the month for the, for the silks so or the, the 25 yard size. So I got that, which is fun. Um, I got in the mail. Did I get this? I, did I show this this week? No, I think I, or, I ordered this from Garan. One Nation. There are two charts, two patriotic charts that I want to stitch. I am not a patriotic stitcher, but one of them is this one. And one of them is the one by Jan Hicks that was just released, which I showed last week. This one is called One Nation by Bygone Stitches. Um, how did I show this last week? I can't remember. But what I plan to do is I plan to stitch it. I got all the called for floss from Garan. Um, and the states I have lived in, I'm going to stitch them in the blue from the Field of Stars. So then it will be a little bit personalized. And if I ever move again, I will have to move to a state I've already lived in once I've stitched it. <laughs> Those are the rules. Um, so I am actually going to be starting this on um, July 4th with my friend Andrea. Um, so if any of you have this or you've started it and want to work on it with us, uh, please feel free to pull it out or kit it up and we'll start it on July 4th. I did order some fabric from Fabrics by Stephanie, so that should be on its way when as soon as she gets it dyed. Um, but yeah, so One Nation. I know I see the red, white, and blue and I'm like, who am I? But um, I think it's a really great piece and I really love it. So I got that in the mail. And then, oh man, those um, stash unload. Talk about who am I? You know I'm not a sampler stitcher. I'm not a sampler stitcher. But my friend Andrea, who is very much a sampler, like will stitch any sampler you put in front of her. Um, do you remember when I said I don't like alphabets? Yeah. Um, I like saying things like that because then I eat my words later. Um, I'm on the stash unload pages and, uh, somebody was selling this lavender and lace. It's called fallen roses. And I just thought it was beautiful with that beautiful alphabet. And I don't know. I just think it's so pretty, so pretty. It's called fallen roses. There's the name by lavender and lace. So I'm going to put that in my stash. I think it's beautiful. And then the same seller was selling this antique alphabet. Um, it's called Pat Rogers Counted Collection Antique Alphabet. And I thought this was gorgeous. This would look so pretty. It's from 1982. 
but it's timeless. I think it's gorgeous. This would look so pretty in the cottage garden threads or like silks. You know, if you have little bits and bods of silks or, or uh, over-dyed floss that you don't know what to do with, I think this would look really, really pretty. So I got that as well. And so this is the same seller. I got some other things too, which are on their way to me. So I got those from Sash and Lowe. Then I got two books in the mail. Okay. So the first one, this is called Self Care Cross Stitch. This is $15 on Amazon. Um, Candy from 614 Stitcher has this book. This is what she stitched her piece from Mental Health Care in May came out of this piece. This was a gift to her, I believe. And she brought it to Stitching in the Wild, so we were all able to look through it, and I think it's a really great book. I will do a flip through of this book. I will tell you there is some language in here. Um, so I will cover up the language um, for anybody who um, doesn't need to see the language. Um, but um, I do like a lot of the pieces in here, and for $15, I thought it was a really great purchase. So I got that. So I'll do a flip through of that later. And then I got in the mail the Christmas Cross Stitch Christmas by Craft Ways. This is called Season of Memories. So I will also do a flip through of this this weekend for you as well. Um, yeah, so that came in the mail. So that's really, really fun. I've just flipped through this one really, really quickly. So I haven't even really seen a whole lot in there. Um, so that's that's my haul. Pretty good for only being a week. Um, okay, so since we're in a new month, I do want to go over my June plans with you. Now, like I said before, our magazine monthly challenge, our theme is farm, and our acrostic is manure. Um, guess, guess whose idea the acrostic was? Robin is so kind to let me do manure. Um, I am a 12-year-old at heart, so... And it's cracking me up because everyone's posting their plans in the Facebook group. And it just it just makes me giggle every time I'm like, manure. Uh, here's what I'm doing for manure. So speaking of projects that were started in 2020 and earlier that we have not seen in a while. For the um, theme farm and for several of the letters in manure, I'm pulling out scenic farms it's a dimensions kit um i have restarted this once i'm gonna restart it again <laughs> um i am way up here can't get past that so i am restarting it for the third time well restarting for the second time but starting for the third time okay so let me show you some things about what am I even, so the first time I restarted it, it was because I didn't like the fabric. It was 25 count. So I restarted it and I'm now stitching it on a color and cotton moonstone, 32 count. This was some February, 2021 fabric of the month club. And I will show you where I'm at. So this is what the fabric looks like. So it is kind of like a sky theme, which will go well. This is where I'm at. Um, and the reason why I'm going to restart this is because I have a new way of doing dimensions kits, which is my way, which is not worrying. These are all half stitches, which is not worrying about half stitches. And, you know, um, well, so there are some blends, which I'll do the blends. Um, I just don't like doing like half stitches and whatnot. So um, I'm going to restart it and do it full cross, two strands the way I like it. And what I might actually do is just flip it. And then if I have to, I will probably have to frog it at some point when I get down there. But Or maybe when I'm on a call or something like a Zoom call, I can do some frogging. But I might just restart it up in here. <laughs> so we're going to restart it. Now you might be asking, so this is a kit. I changed out the fabric and you're like, well, you're going to run out of floss, clearly. Uh -huh. But I went to Joann's and the floss that I have used uh, twice already that I will need a third time for that sky, I just took the floss and I matched up to, I don't know if, maybe some of you know, 
Does Dimensions use DMC? I'm not sure if they do or not. Um, I know the, the names are different, and that's probably a proprietary thing or something. But I went to um, Joanne's, and I just matched as closely as I can. Some of these are almost an exact match, at least according to the lighting in Joanne's. Um, and so now I will have the DMC number for what I am using. So if I run out of, so I'm just going to use the DMC for the, the parts that I've started twice already that I'll be restarting. Um, and so I'll know exactly if I run out what to get and it'll be close enough, if not an exact match. So that's my plan for scenic farm. Um, this is one I really love the end result. I just, I got to get it going. Do you know what I mean? And get it to a point where I'm like, I'm not going to restart this again for a fourth time. So Scenic Farm is going to count for the theme, which again is farm. It's going to count for the A in manure for animals because there are animals on the farm. It's going to count for the N in manure because this piece reminds me of Nebraska where I grew up because uh, it's very farm. And then it's going to count for the E in uh, manure because it's stitched on an even weave. So there you go. So the next piece that's going to come out this month is this beautiful bag. Um, this is Winter Quakers by Rosewood Manor. It was going to be Summer Quakers, but I finished that one. So this is what it looks like. I'm actually, I was pleasantly surprised. I'm actually further along on this than I thought I was. Uh, this I'm just stitching on the called for, with the called for Valdani and it's picture this plus dwarf. I didn't realize like, this is how far, I have that big motif. I'll have to double check to make sure that big one is done. I might be missing something in the center, but we're on page four, which is about where I was on Summer Quakers when I started the year. So this one has more of a fighting chance than I expected to get done. Now, there's a lot of those little tiny um, snowflakes, um, which take time. But this is where we're at. And I'll show you again on the main piece. Okay, yeah, so it does look like I have something in the center to do there and some uh, little cardinals. But this is, the pe this is the big motif I'm on. And then there's like this big motif... I mean, there is a lot of color changes, but we we have very much a fighting chance. This one is, <laughs> I thought for some reason that I was, um, I didn't realize I had this one done. This one is huge. That one alone probably took me eight days, so two months to work on. So um, we're doing well. We're doing well on this. Um, so this one for the acrostic will count for the M in manure for Rosewood Manor. It will count for the R for Rosewood Manor. But we're gonna we're gonna push this one to a finish as well. Um because these were all started in 2020. And so this is the last one I have to finish and then the whole series will be done. And then Trust the Universe, which I showed you, counted for the U in manure. Um, and so that's Everything. So you saw that one. So the U is already done. So that's the Magazine Monthly acrostic and theme. The 25-7 piece is going to continue to be Tudor B. My goal is to finish it this year. That is a piece that's on my year of whips. Um, so that should be fine to be able to finish it this month, I'm hoping. Spring Montage, like I mentioned before, is going to come out. It will get four days for Sundays, for seasonal Sundays. Purple Rain is going to come out a total of three times this month. So he's already been out once, so he'll come out two more times. Um, but again, I'll have to space it out. Um, Winter Quakers will come out a total of seven times this month. I know it's only twice on the acrostic, but I want I, I when I planned this, I hadn't looked at how far I was. But right now I have it on the agenda for seven times. Now if something happens or comes up, I can maybe take one of those times off. Um, but we're going to get some good progress on Winter Quakers. And then one you haven't seen in a while is Hearthside Christmas by Erica Michaels. And you know, this one is also on my year of whips that we want to aim for a finish. And I'm hoping to finish it next month in July. We have a ways to go. Um, this border is a lot. Um, but 
we are stitching this on 32 count pear wood uh, by color and cotton. And let's look at where we are. Okay, so we're here. So we have, we are maybe halfway done. I'm planning to give this five days this month and five days next month and hoping that that will finish it. So again, if we look at, I mean, a lot of these are words which go pretty fast, but we have a border, we have these motifs, and then this border. I mean, there's quite a bit of stitching. But man, sweet victory when I get this one done. <laughs> so that's where we're at. And so I want to give this a good chunk of time this month to set myself up to finish it during Jolly July, which is next month. And I'll obviously talk about my plans later for July, but I'm excited about July. And then the last piece that I do want to work on for this month, which I also hope to give five days, is early bird bouquets. Um... So I finished these two. This is also on my year of whips. So I have not yet started this last one. So I don't know that I will get it all done this month, but I'd like to give it five days at the end of the month. Um, I don't think that will be enough to get it done, but um, it will at least move it forward so I can hopefully get this done. And if I finish, like, if I finish Tudor B um, for my 25-7 piece, before the end of the month, I might switch over to early birds to just give that a little bit of extra attention. Those are my June plans. That's a lot. It feels like a lot. But this this week then, um, we'll continue working on Tudor B. We will work on Spring Montage. We'll work on Purple Rain. And we're going to focus most of our attention this week on Winter Quakers. So we will see that come out and hopefully see some good progress when I see you next week. So I think that is everything. It's kind of a longer video, which I know some of you really like. So um, it was fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay cool or warm if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And I will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.